What's cracking everybody's there, Fell Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Badly content. Today's video, I'm taking a look at a strong team in the Ultra League with Giratina and Tentacruel and Poliwrath. There's been a lot of buzz around Tentacruel and Poliwrath lately, especially with Poliwrath getting Icy Wind in the uh, new season update. Tentacruel has come into this meta as now not even so much like an anti-meta fringe pick, but now it's just straight great. Because of the fact that the meta is centralized around Talonflame and Polyrath, and anything that beats both of those has become very popular in the meta. So we're seeing a lot of things like Tentacruel, like Tapu Fini, etc. So this team was also, as, as though it's Axon and I share a brain cell at some point, he is also playing this team at the exact same day that I was on stream. So shout outs to him for being a brother and having a good team and, you know, being awesome. So. Let's take a look at the battles here in the Ultra League with Giratina, Tentacruel, and Poliwrath here. Starting off with a really nice lead into a Talonflame. You love to see it. The entire team beats this thing. And the opponent is staying in. I like to stay in as well here because I'm really resisting that fire damage from the Incinerates. And I really, I can't swap out because Poliwrath does not want to take the flying type damage from uh, from the Talonflame. So I'm going to able to get a shield here. Fake it till you make it, of course, as we get... Um, a shield from the potential Ancient Power coming from the Giratina, which would have done heavy damage, by the way, to this uh, Talonflame, being that it's double weak to Rock. Opponent goes for the Brave Bird and pops him with Polyrath. They are also quite core broken, but because I'm up a shield and I have a really strong answer to Polyrath in the back, I'm going to bring in my Tentacruel. Now, here's some alternatives to this team if you want to try it as we wait for this matchup to play out. If you would rather, if you don't have an XL Tentacruel, as you know, some people don't, I know several who don't, you can swap it out for Jellicent. But if you do, and you don't want to play ABA Ghost, then swap out the Giratina for a Dragonite. Solid version of the team as well. If you don't want to run Polyrath at all, you can swap it out for a Galissapod. Or you could just, um, no, I probably would, I would probably not have a Galissapod in place of Tentacruel, just because Giratina isn't really an, a strong anti-flyer. We would have to have a different conversation about the team at that point. But talking about the teams, reminder that I'm doing a team building seminar on Metafy on the 19th of December, 7 p.m. Eastern. Check out the link in the description of the pinned comment for that. If you're interested, we can, we're can we going to go over team strategies, team building, and all kinds of stuff that's going to be helpful information as we look to get into the game here. So good game to the opponent. Lots of good information to absorb in that seminar uh, about you know, team strategies, team building, composition, and even team reading. Um, so definitely worth checking out. I would appreciate if you, uh, you know, obviously if you sign up, it helps me, helps me, helps support what I do in the channel. But also, you know, it is a lot of good information. So we get a Reggie Steel here on the lead. And the way that I play this out with this team, I stay in with Giratina. I'm fully resisting the move set. As soon as I get a debuff, I dip out. But I'm waiting. So my opponent does not give me a debuff, thankfully. I think that's probably one of the first times I've ever not been debuffed from Zap Cannon. Gotta be honest, it's not very often. So Shadow Sneak's doing good damage here. I lose this matchup if I get debuffed. If I don't get debuffed, I win this matchup. Now, Giratina does dominate this matchup when debuffs are not involved. Zap Cannon does finally give me a debuff, so now I'm safe to pivot into my Polyrath, and this is not a matchup for Mandibuzz. We see MP tie here. I'm gonna go for Icy Wind. Polyrath now absolutely destroys Mandibuzz with Icy Wind, okay? You get to the Icy Wind before they do if they swap in. Because I believe it's 7 to the first Icy Wind. They will get to a move before you do in a straight matchup. But, I don't know. That didn't, I don't know. I don't know. That didn't look like it should have been... I should, it looked like I should have gotten another counter through based on the animations. Maybe I'm crazy. But anyway, um, Icy Wind's coming through. This is going to put the Mandibuzz extremely low and does not put it in a position where it can even Aerial Ace for the KO here. As with two debuffs, the Aerial Ace is really not going to do much. And Tentacruel, or not Tentacruel, uh, Polyrath really has become a very strong safe swap for this reason. Um, especially if trainers don't know how to play around it. Now, the opponent now comes in with a Toxicroak, and I'm not sure if they misclicked or what happened. I feel like Toxicroak would have been the better thing to bring in here, but, um, I mean, if they did mistap, it happens all the time. I do it too, so. But if they hadn't mistapped, I still have a path to victory here as Tentacruel against Mandibuzz is not a bad matchup by any means. I simply would have let Polyrath do as much damage as it could have and let it go against the to uh, Toxicroak, let Giratina get a nice fat farm down and let Tentacruel sweep the end game. And, uh, I mean, I have two shields. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not worried about this in the slightest at this point. Giratina is going to finish this game up for me. Tentacruel is just there for moral support. Waving his little tentacle is going, yeah, Giratina, you the man, go for it. Yeah, you got this. But I'm going to catch on my Tentacruel anyway. I mean, I'm just, because I can. I, I, I like to show people the third just so that they know. 
it's it's not really a mandatory thing that I need to do. Um, it's just I just do it. I don't know. I didn't. I don't. I don't mean it disrespectfully, of course. I just you know. I, there's a lot of times where I'm like, man, I wonder what's back there, and I never get to see. So I kind of want to know. And so I show it to them, so you know they can find out. At least they know, right? So Giratina Mirror Lead, not a very fun lead for me. Um, my Giratina, as you can see, it's trade IVs. So if my opponents have raid IV Giratina, I typically tend to lose CMP, um, trading that little bit of bulk for it. So I go ahead and I over farm here. I, my opponent swaps out, and I'm like, okay, all right. I'm not really sure what to make of this, but I have to bring in my Tentacruel. I don't have to, but I do bring in my Tentacruel as it is doing um, neutral damage with the poison, and I can lower its defenses with the Acid Spray as the Scald is inevitable. It always happens. It's like it's like Zap Cannon, man. You get you get the debuff more often than you really should statistically. Scald, another debuff. Look, 100% rate on debuffs. Fantastic. But I'm still going for Acid Sprays. I'm resisting all the damage from the charge moves of the Suicune. And absolute respect for people who run Suicune. I love that thing. I actually got a chance to run it for a couple games. I have a really good trade IV one. Uh, ran it for a couple games. It was absolutely awesome to uh, to get the chance to use. So I'm going to go for the Scald here to go and do some actual damage here. As I expect my opponent to probably let this go and try to farm down with the, uh, with the Giratina. Which is kind of dangerous to be honest because... You know, obviously you can see that they're going to get a huge farm down from this. And even though my Giratina does have quite a bit of uh, <clears throat> energy, it doesn't really have an HP advantage. So I immediately swap in my Giratina here to do a combo play as my opponent would be expecting to farm down. Excuse me. And I'm going to get lose now. I believe I lose CMP here to this Dragon Claw. I let it go. Um, I'm going to save shields for my Polyrath. I'm hoping that with a shield advantage, whatever they have in the back is going to get beat by Polyrath. And again... You know, we've noticed now at this point that this meta really is very, very centric around Polyrath. Like, Polyrath has become the new Steelix for for most, for the most case. As we've seen things like people running, you know, teams like Cresselia, Tapu Fini, and Pidgeot. You know, things like that. And here's the Tapu Fini. So this trainer specifically only running one Pokemon that is weak to, uh, to, to uh, Polyrath here. But... It's not even weak, right? But this is actually the team. I believe Home Slice Henry he said it. On, he said he found it on my stream. This battle was on my on my live stream from um, I do believe it was Friday, and I had to take a chance on that. I thought they might try to bait me with a surf. I think I should have shielded regardless. I think I win if I shield that, because um, I mean, you could already kind of see how this goes, right? I don't get to enough damage to take out the. Uh, the Tapu Fini before it farms everything on my team down. So, but this is the team that Homeslice Henry took uh, his inspiration from to use. Um, I just need to get to Shadow Sneak. I don't get there, man. Um, using that as his uh, inspiration for the Suicune team. So, cool thing. Cool, cool things you know, right? Got Cresselia on the lead. Got to stay in here. Cresselia is not a fan, or Polyrath is not a fan of Cresselia. And honestly, with Shadow Sneak, Shadow Claw, this is not the worst matchup. Yes, you do have to eat a Moonblast. What I'd like to do here, actually, um, is I just kind of go for as much damage as I can and try not to spend a shield. I do lose the matchup narrowly, I believe, or it would be a very narrow win. It's very IV dependent, I think. Um, but... I do believe I would just rather get the farm on Polyrath or Tentacruel because typically speaking, you know, my, my my common sense would tell me that if they're strong in the lead to Polyrath, they might be weak in the back to Polyrath. However, we can tell that that is not the case as we have yet another team that has multiple answers to the Polyrath. That is exactly why I uh, I told you guys in the other video, man, like I, this is why exactly why I started running Trevenant because nobody respects. It's, they're so focused on beating Polyrath it, nobody's bothering to, ba uh, to, to, to to handle the things that they're incredibly weak to. Like, they're, they're building teams that are so centric around Polyrath that they're forgetting about half of the meta at this point. So, I bring in my Polyrath, given that they've probably got things that are very, very strong to it. And I'm kind of hoping that, you know what, maybe there's a Tapu Fini in the back, too. Because I just saw a team like that. They had Tapu Fini. So, I'm going to save my Tentacruel, hoping that my opponent's once again gone so far against my Polyrath here that I might be able to make something happen. I immediately swap in, and there's the Tapu Fini. It's almost like I was psychic or something. It was a hunch, right? But it makes sense. So, opponent is going to go for um, a swap here to try and catch some energy. They're going to catch these hands in an Acid Spray. I'm hoping I can get to a move here. But they actually shield up here 
and so will I. I figured this is going to do more damage than anything that Tapu Fini can throw at me, so I'm just going to farm down, and at this point, I can just I can just go for Acid Spray and farm down the Tapu Fini. There's absolutely no win condition for my opponent, unfortunately, as all their damage is resisted, and they will not be able to get to enough moves to KO before I just farm down. I go for the Acid Spray just to end it, um, but we end up on a CMP tie, it looks like, so... Either way, uh, you know, good attempt by the opponent. The Polyrath was definitely something they were looking to counter, but, you know, they just happened to not have a good time against Tendercruel in the back. So, well played. Getting into the next game here, we're going to have Giratina on the lead versus an Alolan Sand Slash. Now, this is a core breaker, and I was not expecting to see very many of these because of Polyrath and Talonflame. You would think you wouldn't see very many of them. So, opponent has a Dragon Breath Giratina in the back, and I am very reminiscent of the team that I hit Legend with a few seasons ago running Alolan Sand Slash with a Dragon Breath Giratina. And my my, my own team had a Clefable in the back. However, I have seen this team with things like Galissapod, Tapu Fini, Jellicent. So... At this point, I'm kind of expecting it to be one of those things. Again, team reading, something that I'll be covering in that in that group lesson I talked about, knowing some common teams and being able to discern what could possibly be in the back. You're not going to get it right every time. I mean, I'll get it right maybe 10% of the time, to be honest with you. Um, but it's still good knowledge to have that'll help you as you climb ELO in the uh, in the current season and any season afterwards. You force a shield off the opponent with Polyrath. Imagine that, a fighter forcing a shield off of a Giratina. And they go with the Dragon Claw. I'm going to swap quickly in as I want to lure out the, uh, the Alolan Sand Slash. And I'm going to let my Giratina do as much damage as it can. And I will hopefully be able to come in with Polyrath at some point and, uh, and just counter down. And then at that point... Again, we're hoping Tentacruel can sweep up in the back. It's done pretty good so far, so no reason to assume that it won't now. Again, like we said, if they have anything that I listed in the back that's not Jellicent, it's going to have play. So we'll see how this goes here. Opponent going for the Ice Punch. I'm going to let this go. Get the Polyrath involved here. And then look to counter down before they can get to another move. Counter goes through. And then the opponent has a Galissapod in the back. So another Galissapod enjoyer. Absolute respect. I love Galissapod this meta. It's just so safe and such a good, skillful safe swap. I love to use it. So I'm going to go for a Scald here. It would do some damage and also potentially get that debuff, which I'd like. Uh, opponent can swap out to clear the debuff at this point, but they decide to throw energy. I, maybe their switch clock isn't quite up yet. They throw the energy. I'm going to go ahead and shield just because at some point I'm going to have to shield, but it really kind of sucks uh, to have to shield after you get that debuff. But the opponent does get to a Dragon Claw here before I'm able to farm down, which is unfortunate, but it's still fine. The Galissapod, I don't believe, has any energy left. And so at this point, I should be able to go for two charge moves. I go for a Scald. Two Scalds would be enough. But I'm going to go for the Acid Spray. And I get the shield, which is actually huge. And I go for the other acid spray because I honestly don't remember how much energy the Glissopod has. And I just want to get the damage off before um, they can take me out. And then the poison jabs are enough. And that's a good game. Well played to the opponent. It was very close. That game could have gone either way, honestly. It really could have. Another Registeel lead. Uh, and these were across three sets. I took out some of the less relevant games and some of the ones that, like, were purely team comp because I do it when, whenever I can. If I do multiple more, like more than two sets with a team, and I put it in a video, I try to I try to isolate those ones that are actually going to help somebody see how something's played. So here you can see I got the debuff early on, and I go into a uh, in, into my Polyrath and the opponent <laughs> counter swaps Galarian Moltres, and I'm just like, holy moly, mother of spice, dude, that's beautiful. That I wish I had one. I want one of those birds. I have not yet been able to find one. I have a Master Ball. Give me the Moltres, man. They've got payback. So I'm assuming they're either baiting or they're not running Brave Bird. But you have to respect the Brave Bird anyway because I just... I need to, man. I need to. I, I need Switch because I can't let Tentacruel get matched up against the, the Reggie Steel. So the opponent now has a Cresselia in the back. Perhaps they maybe they misclicked or something, but that's fine. Um, getting Cresselia out here is fine now because I'll be able to still throw some damage at it. Maybe get a debuff. Nope, no debuff for me. I'm not that cool. I go into Switch into Tentacruel hoping to catch a Moon Blast or a Grass Knot. But the opponent throws the moon blast so it's resisted i'm gonna be able to start getting some energy here as the opponent now probably goes for the uh for the grass knot now and uh no they're running future sight so ow that's painful 
So I'm going to go, I'm going to keep going for energy here. I actually should have probably just gone for double skull. I'm going to be honest. It was kind of a, a misplay by me. I figured they had just swapped in. I'm getting to a move anyway, and I would like to get the debuff off, but now they're definitely going to shield. And this is just a mess. So I definitely should have gone for the double skull, but I'm saving that shield for the polyrath because I do believe polyrath will be able to do something here. So I come up with my Giratina to absorb the energy first. And then I'm going to come up with Polyrath to start hitting these things with some counters with the debuff anyway. Um, so being able to counter this down is really nice. Now I have to shield here, unfortunately, in order to continue uh, using my Polyrath. So it, it's just, yeah. And then I get debuffed, which really feels bad. I'm going to go for the Icy Wind. Hopefully the opponent wants to put up one of their shields finally. And they finally do. So they're down to zero shields. They also get the attack drop. And I'm able to win CMP and get to that Scald, which might actually proved to be beneficial here as it gets them down within range of a single shadow sneak now if the opponent undercharges this and farms down that could be bad i have to make sure i have energy loaded the shadow sneak was there so unless somehow their crest wins cmp or i get one turn lag it was chilling now the giratina comes in with just about no energy and i'm able to go for dragon claw to finish off this game very well played to this opponent very very intense game here just very close one too as you can tell, I'm very bad at this. I'm <laughs> very bad at the interim stuff, but we get a Tapu Fini on the lead, and because we have Polyrath in the back, I have to stay in here with the Giratina. Now, if you're running, you know, the version with, like, Galissapod, or you're running the D-Knight lead, this is definitely going to be something you want to pivot out of and go into that Jellicent, um, and then hope to maybe flip switch or something at that point. But uh, opponent is going to go for a move here. I, I don't know why they would throw a Surf in this situation. I think maybe they just expect me to, to, to shield because it's like, you know, they're, st they're staying in. They have to shield, right? They have to respect it. Moonblast doesn't one-shot. I could certainly just let it go. Uh, but the energy now that I have gained is going to go into this opponent's Giratina. And unfortunately, because they have a Giratina, this is one team that I'm not going to be able to swap my Polyrath or my Tentacruel into. So I've kind of resolved at this point to say that I really need to try and get Switch Advantage here. But unfortunately, I lose CMP. So I'm now forced to put up my second shield in order to get to that point. Um, I would much rather have my Tentacruel locked onto that Tapu Fini if I can get it. So, my opponent no shields. I have switch advantage. They have a Talon Flame. I, at this point, can go for some energy here. Maybe fake it till I make it if they want to shield up a potential Ancient Power. Uh, but Tentacruel is going to have a lot to do here. As I swap in my Polyrath immediately, and the opponent throws energy. They have Brave Bird. This sucks. But they have Fly, which would do... There, that's that's fine. Now, the opponent does go and for, they have enough energy for another move anyway. So, uh, unfortunately, not going to be very good for me here. But I'll be able to come in with my Tentacruel and hopefully be able to make something happen here. As even though they have a shield, um, all of their damage is pretty much resisted. So, I'll be looking to uh, to try and mow through this Talon Flame. Even though Fly is a good move, um, I'm just I'm kind of hoping that they aren't going to be able to get through it. So we're going to go for the Acid Spray, hope to get that shield, and then look to farm down the Talon Flame. And I'm going to have to see if we can make some magic happen here. Now the opponent hard swaps in their Tapu Fini. I was expecting them to stay in with the Talon Flame, but I think they may have been afraid of getting farmed down. But I do have my Giratina in the back for a potential catch. Um, but the opponent has an, has the energy for the move here. I think it's just, just a Surf, though, uh, and they do throw it, so it shouldn't be enough for the opponent to be able to get to anything. But unfortunately, they were at the move already. And so I'm going to have to let my ten uh, Tentacruel go. But because we are two off the move, and we're going to be able to get to the Dragon Claw in time. Now, I got one turn lag bringing. You saw an Incinerate sneak in there. If the opponent was at a move, I would have lost CMP, and that would have felt real bad. But good game to the opponent. This game's mechanics are wacky and broken, and I hate them all. We get a 3-2 to start this off here. Um... Played this game, uh, played this set. We had like a 4-2 four, a four two start, and then I believe we ended up with a 4-1, I think. Anyway, um, apparently I forgot to edit this part out. So, um, yeah, we're just going to... Here we go. Uh, once Look, I'm not perfect, all right? Once in a while, I forget to edit out one or two queue times. We're still here. It's all good. So, we're going to get into the next set of battles here. Giratina and Cresselia once again. 
We're going to go for the Giratina Lee here, just like last time. I'm going to stay in, go for these Shadow Sneaks, and I'm going to look to... Uh, and like and remember, like I said, I, I, did, I did snip some battles here, so it's not straight two sets like usual. So I wouldn't be surprised. We've got time for, what, maybe two, three more battles? You'll probably see the uh, the last set here in a minute. But anyway, um, going for the Shadow Sneaks here. As again, I cannot just swap in against the Cresselia. Polyrath being an awkward thing in the back that I just I can't let get near Cresselia. So this is where I decide to start letting the Moon Blasts go and see maybe I can start getting some farm on my Polyrath. So opponent comes in with a Charizard, makes a very nice snipe here, but I'm coming in with my Tentacruel now, and I'm going to look to try and force a shield off the opponent here. Easily able to tank two Blast Burns even from this Charizard as it's a non-shadow. This is easy uh, for Tentacruel here. Going for the Acid Spray, but unfortunately it's a CMP. The opponent goes for a Dragon Claw here, and kind of hoping they don't shield this, to be honest. But if they do, that's going to be a painful, painful thing. Um, yeah, okay. So thankfully they shield it. And I'm going to go for the next Acid Spray here. The opponent, maybe not knowing the counts, maybe they assume it's a Scald. I'm going for the Acid Spray, and they do not shield that. So, Sag for me, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to commit one more shield here to get this farm down, and then look to try and deal with the Crest. But the opponent comes in with a Typhlosion, and I am not going to be able to get to the... Well, I am like, get, yeah, I'm able to get to the Scald, but for some reason I didn't throw it, thinking that maybe I could just go for the Acid Spray. I should have just thrown the Scald. I honestly, honestly... Didn't think I was going to get to the Scald in time. I thought that it was going to be one off. So there I try to call what would have, what could have possibly been a Solar Beam. And I should have shielded this. Absolutely. I was trying to save a shield for the Cresselia. But what ends up happening here is I get way too close to being KO'd. And unfortunately the wing attacks from the Charizard are going to do just enough to be able to put my Polyrath down to a point where the Psycho Cuts are going to take it out. And I go for the Icy Wind here, hoping for a Scald, and I, I should have just gone straight for the Scald after this, but I didn't think that I was going to make it, and I didn't think I was going to live the Psycho Cut. Now, in hindsight, I lived the Psycho Cut, and I should have just gone for the Scald. So, mistake on my end, but it is what it is. Good game to the opponent. They played it very well. Next game, we got a dominant lead, Galvantula, into the Giratina here. Opponent immediately swaps out Jellicent, and I do not have an answer for this either. So, the Pierce, here's the situation, right? I need Giratina to remain on that Galvantula, but I also need it to deal with the Jellicent that's in front of me. This is a very dangerous issue that I've got to have to deal with. So, what I need to do is I need to try and put myself in a situation where I can make something happen here. So, I'm going to go ahead and stay in for a little bit, trying to put this Jellicent down into the deep, you know, yellow or red and get to a point where I can come in with, you know, one of my other two Pokemon, absorb a Shadow Ball and then have some energy for the Galvantula here. And that's exactly what I look to do, except I stay in for this and I'm just going to let the Shadow Ball go. I realize that Galvantula is going to be a problem, but it's not an unbeatable problem because I have really strong charge move damage that I can use. So I come up with my Polyrath here. I do, you know, in hindsight, you know, it's always, you know, you play the game, you do what you think is best in the moment, you look back and see, okay, well, maybe there's something I could have done. And that's a key to improving as a player, never blaming the game, but blaming yourself. And I scream and yell at this game a lot, but at the end of the day, First thing I'm always going to do is I'm going to look back and see, was there anything that I could have done differently to win this game rather than just, you know, was it truly just lag or, you know, team comp? But if there was a chance that I could have possibly done something different, I'm going to learn from that. And I want all of you who watch this and even those who don't, I want you all to remember that that's an important way to remember, or an important way to improving as a player is always looking to yourself for why you lost rather than trying to blame the game. But anyway, um... Gonna do my usual spiel here as we look to farm down. The opponent over farming by a lot. I'm gonna call a lunge here. I realize that I probably live one discharge as well. The opponent goes for the lunge and I'm able to farm down before they get to another move. And that's how we deal with Galvantula, right? <laughs> but for anybody who's still here watching, I appreciate you. I'll use this moment to try and um, uh, shill myself in a little bit as I want to as I want to do here. Um, the, the Patreon, best way to support the channel and myself and my family. Um, you know, we always appreciate anyone who decides to sign up for that server as you do get a lot of benefits. You get early access to the videos. You get access to a whole like list of channels that I use for information dumps and you know what to build, what to work on, what's the, you know, what, what kind of teams do you want to have ready for the future upcoming rotations. So a good game to this trainer, by the way, that was a finesse. 
That was an absolute finesse. Vickavolt in the last game. Same deal as uh, as the uh, Galvantula. But they have a Charizard. So this is pretty cut and dry, right? Pretty much, you know, I win by team comp. This isn't even me playing as a, as a skillful player. This Especially because I don't even bother to build the Scald. So first mistake I've made. The opponent does shield. I get lucky in that regard. But anyway... Um, also on Medify, you know, I do coaching on Medify. I'm also doing a group session on team building. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it already in this video, but really appreciate you checking that out if you're interested in getting that kind of lesson. Uh, very good information to be had in that seminar about team uh, team building, team reading, you know, things, strategies, etc. But I also do other other lessons as well. So, you know, there's a lesson called Assessments, which helps you break down the gameplay throughout the entirety of, excuse me, entirety of your game so you don't overthink. Also, uh, move timing, all kinds of things. So, um, you know, recommend checking that out if you're looking to get to the next level of your gameplay here. And getting Switch was absolutely massive. I lose Switch, I lose this game. Honest to God, okay? Now, I didn't think the opponent had a Dragon Claw on their Charizard when they threw it. And I'm glad that I survived it by 1 HP because, you know, they put their Vicavolt on the Polyrath. And I get Giratina lined up on the uh, Greninja and I'm in for a bad time. So, that was definitely a win-switch, win-lead, win-game sort of situation. Um... But yeah, Patreon, Medify, all in the pinned comment description. Uh, really appreciate it if anybody would like to check that out. Great community in my Discord. Lots of information, lots of inside stuff that I don't put out on YouTube. And sometimes I even forget to put it in my videos when I'm supposed to. So really, really good stuff there to check out. Like uh, yeah. early access to teams also. So all the teams that are on these YouTube videos have been sitting on a, on, on a channel in my server for probably since Friday or Saturday. And my Discord's been running. I'm having a ton of fun and getting a lot of uh, wins with them. So... This is pretty cut and dry here. I resist everything. The opponent, really not going to be able to do much here, unfortunately. They did as much as they could, I believe. And it just you just go down to counters and things. And it's a good game. We'll play this game moment. But anyway, so there's that. All right. So getting into the next game here, we're going to have the final game. And you have Giratina against a Greninja. This is not a good lead for me. So I'm bailing immediately this time into Tenacruel as Polyrath would be the hardest counter here. But the opponent stays in to throw energy. And so this tells me one of two things. Either they have a really good counter in the back to Giratina or they have no counter to Tenacruel. So immediately my mind goes to okay, well if they're not if they're not gonna shield this, then maybe they're just sacking the Greninja. But they shield it, which tells me there's a chance they may be running something like double fire. Which also means that I'm very sad that I threw my tentacruel in because that's one of my better fire answers. Uh, but the opponent comes in with a Staraptor, and I'm really not sure why they didn't swap sooner. But I'm going to go for the Scald here, and I'm going to do a ton of damage to the Staraptor. And I'm under, I'm also wondering, possibly, can I get this farm down? But no, I'm not. It was unfortunately not meant to be, but I'm going to go for the Acid Spray. Does the opponent... They don't even shield it. They let me go with Shield Venge, not wanting to give up two shields. Now I can line up my Polyrath onto this thing, and honestly... As long as they have something in the back that Giratina and or Polyrath can beat, this is pretty much over. This is two shields. I don't see very... I don't, I don't, I'm not going to see very much that they could possibly bring in. They also concede. So, well played to the opponent. Unfortunately, they just kind of got a little bit overwhelmed by the team comp there. But picking up a 4-1 after the previous 3-2 set to take some good points, getting into the rank 18. I'm currently rank 18 working through. Um, catch me on Monday. Or actually, no, this is... I'm recording this on Sunday. I'm saying catch me Monday, even though Monday has already happened because this video isn't coming out till like Wednesday. So regardless, I appreciate you all for hanging out and watching with me. Hopefully this team helps you get some points, get some, get some wins, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one, y'all. Bye-bye.